Hello and welcome to this week's edition of It's Your Call, brought to you by our very good friends at Quit Now. We have a look back at some of the decisions from last round, round 18, in the spotlight. As he does every Tuesday afternoon, the umpire's manager, Jeff Geeshan, joins me. Welcome, Geesh. Hi, Wayne. Another busy weekend of AFL football, and umpires have been busy as they have all year. How's yeah. it going? Oh, it's been a tough week as usual. A few blowout games, but a couple of really close games. But uh, overall, not too bad a weekend. Uh, just before we start jumping into uh, some of the decisions, and of course, you can get involved at AFL Hash. Hashtag your call. Pick out a decision across the weekend. Send them through and we'll continue to pick out two across the course of the rest of the year. Does it make it... Is it easier to umpire a game that gets a big margin, that has a big margin, or is it always tougher when it's close, like Richmond-Carlton, for instance? Yeah, no, it's an interesting one. Um, our umpires will say that the closer the game, the easier it is to concentrate. Um, when they become blowouts, that's when the umpires can wander a little bit. So I think the umpires would prefer close games because it really keeps them on their toes. Well, that's where we start. It was a big one on the weekend. Richmond taking on the Blues, a four-point margin. And the video review or scoring review is in the headlines once again. Yeah, we had three in this game, Wayne, and there's been a lot of discussion about it. But, uh, you know, at the review of it, when we've completed looking back at all of them, assessing what happened, we're really comfortable. First one here, Betts clearly gets that kick away. Um, was checked on the night and it was confirmed what the umpire thought. Goal. There's, there's no doubt that Betts got his boot to it, wasn't touched. So really happy with the confirmation of the goal for that one. Um, the next one we see here, or is this the This is the Betts one still, yeah, where clearly got his foot away. No hand or no one else caught up to that ball. So pleased with that one. Comfortable with that decision. Same game. And I think this is the most contentious. Yes, it was a really contentious one. We see Bryce Gibbs go down to pick up the ball. We see Edwards come flying through and have a have a kick at the ball. Certainly not kicking in danger because he didn't uh, swing wildly at the ball. But this was the telltale sign. It was as Edwards kicked the ball, goes past Gibbs' hands, we see the fingers actually split and open. Gibbs wasn't overly demonstrative, but when it came upstairs, uh, you could just see there that the hands did split. This one here was a very interesting one too. Uh, we saw McLean have a snap from the pocket. Boundary umpire right there, right on the spot, heard and saw it flick Rance's hand, and he was able to come in and tell the goal umpire that's not a goal, it's been touched. So really pleased he intervened. Um, it showed that it was inconclusive, but we went with the umpire's call. Just for people's uh, out there, just some, uh, some stats on what's happened so far. You happy with how it's trending? Uh, yeah, we are happy with what's trending. Mm. I mean, for example, in that game there was three... All close calls, all correct calls. Now, had we got any of those wrong, um, the, the result could have been different. Four-point ball game. Let's just clear. I think the Edwards one with the Bryce Gibbs one was a bit inconclusive. Well, I thought it was inconclusive. I felt, thought that Bryce, not that you would judge it on Bryce Gibbs's reaction, but his lack of reaction immediately suggested to me that he didn't touch it. There was yeah. a number of people that came to me on Twitter said, no, I got it absolutely wrong. So I'm happy to be corrected. Yeah. Yeah. But let me just clear one thing up for my own benefit, hopefully everybody else's. We want to encourage our goal umpires to make an original decision. Correct. If there is some doubt, then we go up and we have a score review. Correct. If that is not conclusive, does it go back to the goal umpire's original decision or can that be overridden by any of the umpires around? It, it can be overridden by any umpire's call. It's called the umpire's call because sometimes goal umpires just aren't in the best spot. And like we saw that one with the boundary umpire, the one with uh, Gibbs, it was a field umpire who was fairly close by, heard the noise and he thought, gee, we need to check this. And look, we were really comfortable with that one. Although Gibbs didn't remonstrate much, um, you could clearly see the fingers split. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're asked to look at vision. We see that vision, we see the fingers split, we've got to make a call. You know, if we don't make a call on that, well, we're not doing our jobs either. So, very comfortable with that one. OK, I'll better your better judgment. The other thing that's creeping is also is players putting pressure on umpires to make the score reviews themselves. Let's hope that that doesn't open up Pandora's box. We've had a few runners get in the way again. And uh, in a game that was decided by four points, Richmond's runner on this occasion cost them a goal, ultimately. Yeah, look, it was just unfortunate again. And we see the Richmond runner doing everything he can to try and get out of the way. It's just Don't go in there. It's really unfortunate. That's the bottom line, Wayne. Like, officials have got to stay away from play. And it probably made Jake King even pull his kick. We see the, the official try to dive under the ball, but mm. clearly that's interfering with play and it's a free kick. No argument there and all runners out there stay out of the way because Richmond lost that game by four points and that was a, a free kick that ultimately resulted in a Carlton goal. Uh, Geelong taking on the Adelaide Crows, downfield free kick against the Cats on this occasion. Yeah, we can see um, Douglas kick the ball, get uh, bumped marginally late, but it is late. Mackie then just 
punches the ball away, which creates a delay in play, time wasting. He should have just either let the ball go or caught it and handed the ball back to his opponent. But in this case, he just punched the ball away, which constitutes a delay in play, free kick. No arguments there. I don't like tunnelling in our game. The potential for injury can be quite serious. This was on the lower end of it, but Ben Stratton against David Hill on the weekend. Yeah, correct, Wayne. I think with this one here, was the lower end of it, but we see him turn, look at his opponent, and just run in and make body contact as Hill was about to leap. And as we'll see, you know, this footage here, he jumps, lands very awkwardly. Um, Stratton, no eyes to the ball, just jumps into him, puts Hill off balance, very happy with a free kick for blocking front-on interference. And that was the first of our Twitter nominations from Paul Nolan. PW Nolan is the Twitter handle there. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate that. The second of our... Twitter nominations is from Thomas Francis, TGF174. And this is holding the ball, which I actually think is a bit stiff on Nathan Van Burlo. Yeah, look, we could probably agree with that, but the, the thing the umpire's done is held his whistle a long time. You saw Scott Jeffrey out the back there. Van Burlo takes the ball, turned 360, so he's had a reasonable time. Yes, he's protecting himself, but then we want him to make a genuine attempt. But didn't he do that then? Hitting the ball into your chest or banging your chest. But he's got a player he's who's not... trying to hold it into him. Yeah, we just want to see the umpires make a l uh, the players make a little bit more effort there. Uh, can we just uh, focus this week on just allowing the ball players to uh, do their thing and the other blokes that try to tackle them all the time? Well, let's not give them the easy free kicks. But I respect your uh, decision on that occasion. This one also contentious. Head high contact. Mm -hmm. want you to talk us through what uh, Jeremy Cameron did on the weekend. And is Tyson Goldstack unlucky? Goldstack? Look, he is a bit unlucky. The umpire deemed that um, Goldstack was actually moving towards Cameron. Cameron goes down, so he's down already. Nose contact's coming, stays down. Uh, Goldsack's just moving ever so slightly towards him, which is causes Didn't that Didn't duck front his head contact. knowing it was coming? Look, I'm not sure whether he ducked his head or he's already down there and realised contact was coming and probably looked to try and protect himself. So, look... It wasn't the, the most obvious high contact. We discourage players from putting their head down mm. and trying to draw contact. I don't think uh, Jeremy Cameron was all about trying to draw contact there. I think he wanted to take the ball, then he wanted to protect himself. Unfortunately for Goldsack, just moving slightly, we want to protect the ball player as much as we can. And in that case, happy that he paid a free kick for high All contact. right, I'll wear that. But what, could Kyson, what should Tyson Goldsack have done in that in that instance then? Yeah, well, he's got options. Clearly, we want him to go for the ball. He could have actually gone down low himself, put his head down as well. If there's any head-high contact then, banging of heads or banging of shoulders, that's just play on. Mm. The other thing he could have done is probably realised that Jeremy was going to get there first, stood back a little bit, waited, then tackled, or, you know, tried to bump him from the side, but certainly not just keep moving towards him. So, look, it wasn't the most obvious one. And as I keep saying, we don't want players thinking they can put their head down, run towards players with the ball and draw a tackle because it is dangerous but we we're comfortable with the free kick. Alright, appreciate you coming in Gish, really uh, enjoy your contribution every week. Gish will be back next Tuesday to do the same again congratulations to Reed Clark of Yarrawonga in Victoria and Nathan Bourne also of Berwick in Victoria, winners of last week's Quit Now Reserve Seat Tickets. Quit Now, our very good friends on this program are giving you the chance to win reserve seating double passes to a game of your choice all you have to do is log on to quitnow.gov.au and in 25 words or less give us your best motivational speech, encouraging a friend or family member to quit smoking. We'll see you next week.